Hi everyone and welcome to the Emergency Physicians ECG course. This is Hisham Ibrahim. I'm one of the Emergency Medicine Consultants in the United Kingdom. And today we're going to be discussing case number 12 from our Facebook page. Uh, bear in mind that in the last slide there will be um, a question about uh, a fun thing. So uh, bear with me and try to answer the question uh, in the comments section um, in this page. So this is a really interesting case about a topic that I think is really important uh, for all of us to know about. Um, so this is a 58 year old gentleman who self presented to ED, so walked in to the reception to register himself with a cardiac sinus chest pain that's been lasting for about 30 minutes. His past medical history was actually nothing, just hypertension and otherwise well. And his observations on arrival were, as you can see here, so um, respiratory rate of 23, saturation of 100% on room air, um, pulse rate was 93, blood pressure was a bit high and temperature was 36.3. So nothing really concerning or significantly abnormal here that will justify the pain. Uh, so he's had an ECG and this was his ECG. So as I always say, this is the time to pause the video and have a detailed look at this ECG and let's see if you can figure out what's going on here. Okay, welcome back. Let's have a look together and, uh, and analyze this ECG. So let's analyze it and find out what we can come out of it. Having a look at this ECG from the ischemia point of view, there will be many things that um, I'll be concerned about. So to start with, looking at lead AVR, we've got a bit of an ST elevation here um, that will be concerning in presence of chest pain. Also looking at the inferior leads, we will see an ST depression in two, maybe in three, but to be honest, the baseline is a little bit wavy, so I'm not really sure. And definitely there is an ST depression in AVF. So that's all concerning from the ischemia point of view, but if we have a further look at the anterior leads, we will notice that we've got a weird looking ST depression with a hyperacute T wave in V3 and V4 and maybe in V5 as well. So um, let's make things a bit bigger. So looking at AVR, we can clearly see now that we've got a bit of an ST elevation if we have a look at this as our baseline. And uh, looking at the anterior leads, we will notice that we've got a poor R wave progression as well, um, which is another sign of ischemia. And uh, then we will uh, see what we've talked about as the ST depression that is upsloping followed by a tall symmetrical T wave. So again, let's make things a little bit bigger and look at it this way. So as you can see here, we've clearly got a, an odd looking upsloping ST segment followed by a tall symmetrical T wave. And if you've been following this page for a while, you will uh, know that what we're talking about is what's called the De Winter sign. So let's talk about the De Winter sign with more details. So this is a relatively new sign that's been first reported by Robert De Winter and Hein Wellens uh, in 2008 in an article that's been published in the New England Journal of Medicine. And what they talked about was um, a sign that is um, described as an ST depression, so J-point depression, that is followed with um, followed by an upsloping ST segment, then a tall symmetrical T wave. And they've reported this in the precordial leads, so from V1 to V6. So it's basically the sort of the T wave that if you look at, you will start thinking, what's the potassium of this patient doing? Because that looks like a hyperkalemia ECG change to me. So that's the De Winter sign um, when they reported it. They've also reported loss of R wave progression in some cases, and they also reported uh, a slight ST elevation in lead AVR in some of their cases. So back to our patient, we can see here that we've got the ST elevation in AVR that we've just covered, and uh, we've also got the poor R wave progression there. So moving on to the value of the winter sign, what does it mean when I see it? Well, basically it is a sign of an acute proximal LAD occlusion. 
So it is that serious. It's been seen in about 2% of cases with LAD occlusion. Um, and, uh, and I'll show you the studies in a second. So it is possibly a new indication for cat lab activation as a STEMI equivalent, but actually, to the best of my knowledge, it is not in any guidelines yet. So if you want to compare the De Winter sign with the Wellen syndrome, you can treat the Wellen syndrome as some sort of a subacute proximal LAD occlusion that should be treated urgently, while the De Winter sign is an acute proximal LAD occlusion that should be treated emergently. So here's the first article that's been published by, um, by De Winter and, and Wellens uh, in November 2008. Um, that was uh, the first to describe this sign as a new ECG sign of a proximal LED occlusion. And in this article, they studied, actually they published a study uh, that they've done um, over uh, more than 1,500 patients. Uh, and they found this pattern in about 30 patients out of them. So it's about 2% of the cases. And then a year later, in October 2009, uh, both of them again uh, were included in this publication. So that is Wellens, that's De Winter. And, um, and again, they studied more than 1,800 patients to check uh, for uh, 1,800 patients of patients with LED occlusion that require PCI. And, uh, and they found this pattern in about 35%, of, uh, sorry, 35 patients of them. So that's about 2% of the cases. So over the past few years, there has been growing evidence to suggest that the winter sign pattern is highly predictive of an acute LED occlusion. And some authors started suggesting that actually this should be treated as a STEMI equivalent case and, uh, and the cath lab should be activated uh, for the winter sign when it is seen, and if not, then to consider thrombolysis. So let's have a look at some examples of the de winter sign, and let's see what happened to them. So here is one of the cases, and we can clearly see here um, the ST elevation in AVR, but we can also clearly see the de winter sign in V2, V3, uh, V4 as well. So again, ST depression, upsloping ST segment followed by a tall symmetrical T wave. Another example from Egypt, and again, we can clearly see here that we've got an ST depression, upsloping ST segment, tall symmetrical T wave. Here is a third example from Egypt, and that was for a 39 year old male who was diabetic, presented with chest pain, and, uh, and we can clearly see here that there is a concerning ST elevation in AVR, concerning ST elevation in AVL, but also looking at the lateral leads, uh, we have got a de winter sign in V4, V5, and V6. Uh, this patient was found to have a uh, triple vessel disease and he's had a successful um, PCI for the LAD. Moving on, so that's another example from Hampshire Hospital. Um, for a 29-year-old male patient with chest pain with absolutely no ACS risk factors, the PCI was activated for this patient because of this ECG that is clearly showing a de winter sign in V2, V3, uh, and in V4. And, um, and he was found to have a completely occluded LAD that was successfully stented. So that's a great save uh, that was done for this patient. Another example from Barnsley Hospital uh, for a 72 year old male patient with chest pain. And uh, this ECG was his pre-hospital ECG. And, um, and um, if you don't know, so in Barnsley Hospital, there is no PCI facility. So the pre-hospital guys uh, didn't really spot the winter sign in V2 and V3. So they transferred this patient to Barnsley Hospital and they knew that there is no PCI facility there. So on arrival to the hospital, a repeat ECG was done. And here is the repeat ECG that is clearly showing this STEMI uh, happening and this patient had to be retransferred to the local PCI center for a PCI. So, um, so that will take us to another interesting point in relation to the, uh, to the winter sign, which is when actually would you expect the change to happen in the ECG? I mean, when you ask for a repeat ECG, 
what time frames do you give to your nurses to get you the next one? So I'm going to show you this example uh, that will, uh, I think, be an interesting one for you. So that was a 53-year-old male patient with chest pain. And uh, let's have a look at his serial ECGs. So ECG number one uh, on arrival to ED, and we can clearly see that we've got a de Winter sign here, especially in V3. Let's have a look at his second ECG that was done just four minutes later. And now we can see that the ST segment is elevated now rather than depressed in V3. So things started progressing V2 and V3 four minutes later. Then one minute after ECG number two, we've got a more progression of the ST segment elevation, in, especially in V2. Then 40 seconds later, this is what we have. Then 35 seconds later, this is what we have. And this is nine minutes later. Obviously, the cat lab activation has happened uh, from ECG number two. Um, and, um, and the repeat ECGs were just while we were waiting for the patient to be uh, ready and the cat lab to be ready uh, for the patient. Uh, but this is just to show you how quick the progression of cases can happen. So to be honest with you, what I personally do, if I see a patient that I'm concerned about STEMI or ACS with a de Winter sign ECG is I stick the patient to the ECG machine in the recess room and I uh, start speaking to the cardiology team, trying to activate the cath lab while I'm just pressing print back to back, waiting for the STEMI to happen. So. Here is a publication that was published in December uh, 2018. Um, so when we talked about the De Winter sign, uh, it's been uh, always reported in the anterior leads. But in this publication, that was, uh, to my knowledge, the first to report it in the inferior leads. And, um, and they are suggesting here that this could be a sign of an acute RCA occlusion. So uh, this is it about the de Winter sign. So let's go back to our case to find out what happened there. So this was a 58 year old male patient who presented ED with a cardiac sounding chest pain. This patient was seen by Dr. Hazel Fenley, who's an ED consultant in Poole Hospital. And um, when she saw the patient, she was really concerned about the clinical presentation of the patient. And uh, she was concerned about the de Winter sign. So uh, what she did was, she um, she started activating the cat lab and she started getting serial ECGs for this patient. So let's have a look at the serial ECGs and let's keep an eye on the timing. ECG number one was this one that was done at 1946. And as you can see here, it is showing the de Winter sign in the anterior leads. Then nine minutes later, that's ECG number two. And obviously, now we've got a bang door STEMI in V2, V3, and maybe a little bit in V1 as well. So uh, that is nine minutes after the first ECG. Then 10 minutes later, third ECG, that is not showing a massive difference compared to the second ECG. Then a minute after the third ECG, the patient suddenly collapsed and developed a VF cardiac arrest. This patient received one shock with one cycle of CPR that, is, uh, that was followed by ROSC with a GCS of 15. And uh, a post-ROSC ECG was done that showed this. So this is the post-ROSC ECG, four minutes after uh, ROSC and 23 minutes from the first ECG. And now you can clearly see where we are in terms of the ST elevation in the anterior leads. So let's compare the ECGs together in relation to the timing. This is ECG number one on arrival to ED that is showing the winter sign. Nine minutes later, we've got a Bangor STEMI and uh, 23 minutes after the first one, we have got a Bangor STEMI and there was a VF arrest in between. So, uh, so this was what happened to this case. Then uh, the patient was transferred to the local PCI center for primary PCI, and they found that he's got triple vessel disease uh, with a critical LED lesion. 
that was successfully stented and the patient did well actually and he was uh, he's had a full recovery and stayed asymptomatic for about a month uh, then he presented to me again with chest pain and this is how I heard about the whole story so when he came to me with chest pain he said that he's had a recent STEMI he's had a recent cardiac arrest so obviously I was super concerned so I checked the previous notes for all the ECGs and um, and I still remember the reflection of my face uh, with a growing big smile looking at the screen when I saw the winter sign I was like oh yeah that's the winter sign let's have a look and see what this ST is going to do uh, and the smile kept getting bigger looking at the STEMI progressing it was cool uh, I mean for me not for the patient of course um, so uh, so actually the whole credit saving this patient's life is not for me at all I haven't seen this patient when he was presenting with the uh, with this STEMI the initial one um, and it's all to uh, to my friend Hazel um, and obviously I've admitted this patient in the second attendance but he was fine and uh, he was sent home next morning so this was it about this case uh, so in summary the winter sign is an important sign that we need to be aware of and it is counted at the moment as a pre-STEMI sign probably a STEMI equivalent sign not long from today so we should pay attention to this and um, we should I think consider it to be added to the activation criteria for the primary PCI and to be added to the bypass tool of the pre-hospital colleagues regarding the timing for serial ECGs again this is something that can vary from a case to another um, but be aware that some serious ECG changes can happen in seconds uh, to a few minutes so please uh, consider closer ECGs to each other from the timing point of view and uh, and that will be it in terms of the summary for this case so thanks a lot for listening and now we're going to come to the question that we always uh, have at the end which is uh, where do you think this picture is taken from and this will be it for this uh, week so thanks a lot and i will talk to you very soon bye for now